Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I thought it would be fun because I wanted to try out the Lolita palette. I got this on sale through Sephora. Um, I got a couple more of the blushes. I got two more, so I wanted to try one of those. I have the dagger tattoo liner I've never tried. I have yet to use the holographic KVD palette. I got a new lipstick shade I haven't used, and then I pulled out my Saint and Sinner. So I've got mostly a full face. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stick around. Make sure you're subscribed, and we're going to jump into the video right okay. now. Okay, to start off, um, I already primed, moisturized, did all of that. Um, I don't have the foundation anymore. I have used the Locket foundation. Um, it didn't sit well on my skin. Um, I may not have been priming and moisturizing correctly. Um, I ended up decluttering it while I was still in school, but I do have the Locket powder. I have a little deluxe sample size that I've never tried, so I took the sticker off of that. So I'm going to try the powder, but I'm just going to go in with my Hey Honey Trick or Treat CC um, moisturizing cream. This is the light to medium. This is the only shade they make of this. So if this is your, if you can get away with this color, I do recommend this. It does have some coverage for being a CC cream. Um, I sometimes do apply this with a brush. As you can see, I'm right on the cusp because it's like borderline too dark, but I'm sharing it out a little bit more um, just because I'm using the sponge, but you can, I do sometimes if I want like maximum coverage with this, I do go in with a brush, but I like this. This is one of those products I got a sample in an Ipsy bag and just really, really liked it. Let me know if that's a video anybody would be interested, like samples that made me go out and buy the full size because I have quite a few products. I have enough that I could do a whole video. So let me know if anybody would be interested in seeing samples that made me go out and buy the full size. I have a little bit of redness today, but not nothing bad. I'm pretty fortunate. My skin's pretty decent most of the time. And I didn't feel, I've been doing like the full coverage foundation in every video and I don't even like full coverage foundation. So I've decided just to take it a little bit easier today and just put this on. I haven't used this in a while. I like this a lot in the winter time just cause it is moisturizing. Um, it's nice in the summer cause I think it has sunscreen in it. Maybe it doesn't, but it is very moisturizing. So I was using this a lot in the winter and it does like, if you go in with a brush, it does have a lot of coverage. So like I said, it probably doesn't look like it right now cause I'm just using a sponge. Cause I just wanted a little bit, nothing crazy. I do have to take this down my neck because it is, it is one of those products that kind of settles and just kind of match you a little bit, but so this is the only color range of this and I I don't know why it's Hey Honey is kind of a smaller like indie company. They make really good skincare and stuff, but their color range on products is not good. So if you if this shade can work for you, I do recommend this product. It is a little bit expensive. This is like 44 or something like that. But I liked it. I liked the sample enough. that I bought it. Oh, and I do, I used to have a Kat Von D lid primer. I think I got rid of it because I didn't really like it. I don't see it in the drawer anymore, but I did used to have like a priming stick. Um, I have a little bit of staining from the BH cosmetic video, the, um, that pink in the Zodiac Love stained this eye. But we'll cover it up. So let's get, and I don't have her concealers, so I'm just going to do my normal um, 
my normal concealers. So I'm gonna go in with my Pixi and then my Neutrogena Hydro Boost Conceal Stick and then I'm gonna use the Maybelline. This is my second one and I'm already like that far down. So that's a good product. The first one lasted me a long time. I've been using this one more, either that or they don't put as much in it as they used to. I don't think I was using it as often as I've been using that one either, so. Maybe go in with just a little bit of the Hydro, the Hydrating Elf. One also, just because I think I'll use it on my lids. My allergies have been really, really bad today for some reason. So my eyes are probably, I feel like I can see a hair on my face somewhere. When I look down, I can see something, but I don't know where it went. And I just kind of go over this just a little bit, cover up the salmon shade. This is really to help conceal. I'm gonna take it around my nose a little bit. And I do have a couple of little spots on my forehead, but they're not bad. Yeah, I just was going to use one of my other full coverage foundations, but I'm not, not really doing much today, so. I just did not feel like going in with another full coverage. Kind of give my face a little bit of a break. And then I'll see if I need to put the e.l.f. or on my nose or anything. I do really like that Age Rewind concealer. It works really good. I think they do have a salmon shade of that. I thought about trying that for color correcting and then going in with the other one, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, I'm going to put just a little bit of this under here. And then I'll just put that on top. So as you can see, we have some staining. If I went in, I have some really good like makeup remover. It would probably take that off. My face and my eyes were kind of sore from doing the four looks. So I was like, oh, I'll just leave it and then. I wasn't going to wear any makeup today, I would have gone in and tried to get the rest of it off. Because usually if you got a decent makeup remover or micellar water, you can usually, if not, I would have just put a little bit of concealer just on my lid before I left. But so my daughter is still going to preschool three days a week. We were trying to keep her in as long as possible. Um, they're not planning on closing, um, even though I'm at home. We were on the waiting list for like seven months, so we, we talked about just pulling her out, but the second I go back to work, we're going to have to put her back on the waiting list, and we were on it for so long, we're kind of just waiting it out because, like I said, it took forever to get her in there, and it gives her something to do. Um, they've taken precautions, so like the parents aren't allowed to come all the way in, and they're trying and I appreciate them staying open because there are like doctors and nurses and people like that that need the daycare but she's other than the exposure there she um is home with me and like I said it gives her something to do so yeah like I said, we talked about pulling her out but I was like then she's gonna be on the waiting list again for six months like it it's a popular preschool in town so 
And then if everybody just pulls their kids out, then the poor preschool's going to be hurting. And so I did consider maybe just taking her down to two days a week, but then we'd have to, as soon as I started working, we'd have to go back to three days a week. And we don't know how long this is going to take, how long, you know, everything's going to be shut down. It keeps changing. So for now, she still goes. So that gives me a little bit of time to film during the day, the day she's gone. I try to take advantage. I've been cleaning my house, organizing stuff, things that are hard for me to do when she's here. So, and Mike's gone all the time because he's a truck driver, if anybody didn't know. So he's on the road. So, and then I'm able to go, like if I need to go get something at the store, I try to do that when she's not with me. So I don't have to take her in the store. So, I don't want anybody to, like, come for me in the comments. I'm being irresponsible because she's still in preschool. But, like I said, I don't want to just pull her out. Because then when I go back to work, and then you got to think there's, there it is. There's going to be, like, how many other people, pull, you know, bringing their kids back. And how many people have pulled their kids out. I don't want the day, the preschool to suffer either. So, it's kind of been a little bit of a balancing act in my age. She likes going. I'm kind of hoping she starts talking more and more she's around the other kids. So I don't know why I did that. Okay. I closed it. I set it with my little brush and then I'm going to see. I was telling my story and I forgot. Okay. So I did go in with the powder and I used my little brush to kind of set and I'm going to go in with a sponge. Some powders do not play well wet. I would be interested in getting a full size of this. I actually like it so far. And I'm just resetting everywhere I put. I'm not baking. Um, the difference between baking and setting is obviously baking you go in with a lot more powder. Um, I like to set with the sponge and really press it in, kind of really melts, melts it in and gives you the best staying power without looking heavy and cakey. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind this powder. I like it better than the Ciate London one. I need to try that one again, the one we got in the BoxyCharm. I did not care for that when I used it with the Makeup Revolution Hydrating um, Foundation. I mean, that's a pretty thick foundation too, but I did not like that powder with it. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to set my whole face with this or not. That's the only bad thing with these little like containers it's hard to get a full size brush because it's so small but it definitely does it's enough that it gives me an idea whether or not and that's one of the reasons I've never bought a full size is because it's a, it's an expensive powder I'm probably still going to refer to this as Kat Von D, even though she is not with the company anymore. I figured since she's not with the company anymore, maybe people wouldn't be as harpy about me doing a brand video with this because I get people's complaints about her, but it doesn't mean the makeup was all bad because her OG products were still good. She was having some quality control issues, so that's why I stopped buying a lot of stuff recently. And then the Lolita palette was expensive, and it's an all-matte palette, so I wasn't necessarily in a hurry to get. Just checking to see if I actually set the whole thing. Feels like it did. If not, I'll go in with another powder, but... That doesn't feel bad. I might take a little bit of my e.l.f. one just because this is very mattifying. But yeah, I don't, I don't dislike that. The next time she has a sale, I might be interested in getting one of those powders because I did like it. I'm gonna 
just take a little bit of the e.l.f. just around the, my whole face. That was probably a lot. This is the glow powder. Definitely don't need this because my face felt like it was pretty set. This does stay a little bit tacky because it is like a a CC like moisturizing, tinted moisturizer almost, but so I've always said it. I've never been one that likes my face feeling like tacky. So this will give me a little bit of a glow. So yeah, I so far I like the powder. Okay, I'm gonna go do my brows off camera. Okay, right so back. I went ahead and did my brows and I also did my bronzer and contour because those are not Kat Von D either. Like I said, I'm still probably going to call it Kat Von D, even though she's not with the company anymore, just because it's still KVD beauty. So, just let that go. Um, <laughs> I know she's not with the company anymore, it's just habit. So, I'm going to go in with the highlighter first. So, I got this on sale, and then it was one of those where I had an extra... 20% off of the sale items. So this was really cheap. I'm going to do the pink opal since I'm doing Lolita colored makeup. This is obviously the pink one. I think I thought this would go the best with the colors that I'm using. I'm pretty sure I've used my ABH, my Moonchild Glow Kit, which is also like holographic highlighters, but I don't believe, I might have used the green one a little bit. I know I've swatched them, but I don't remember if I've actually put this on my face. So this is pretty much a first impression because I don't remember like I said. I know I stuck my fingers in it and swatched it when I got it, but I don't think I've actually used this one. I think I've used... ABH one. That is not bad. Okay. I am going to put some lip foam on now while I'm still thinking about it. Kind of let that soak in a little bit. The concealer on my eyelids is creasing a little bit. I may go in with a little bit of the MAC paint pot just on top of it. Because, like I said, I feel like it's creasing just a touch. Um, so the blush, I'm going to use Fox Glove. I had, let me show you the one. Now there's powder all over me. Um, I had Rosebud, which is the first shade that I bought. It's very mauve -y. And then KVD was having a 30% um, off. So I got two more blushes and the Lolita OG lipstick. Um, just because I wanted a couple more of these shades. So I got Peony, which is the lightest one. I really, really like the formula of these, even though they're a matte blush, because I really do like satiny, um, shimmery blushes, but, and then the packaging is so pretty. So you can see how much lighter that one is. And so Fox Glove is, these three looked like the most wearable ones for my skin tone. The other two, like you're starting to get into the darker families, not to say that I couldn't wear them, but that's Fox Glove. So that's the color we're going to be using today. In the pan, just looking at them, it's like, oh, that looks like it's all the same shade. But I think swatching there, they look different. But I don't think I'm going to get the other two. I feel like, because like I said, they looked, there was one, I think it's Snapdragon is a darker one. I might be able to get away with it, but I'd have to go in with a super, super light hand because these are pigmented. Um, but I think I'm good with the three shades. These are the three shades that I 
would get the most use out of. I, these are all wearable for my skin tone. I don't have to worry about, like I, st you still have to worry about going in a little too much, but yes. Nap, I think it's Snapdragon. I would definitely have to worry about that because it definitely darker. But if you have a deeper skin tone, they do have two or three more shades that are deeper. And it is, like I said, it is a really good formula. I obviously liked it enough to go get two more. I wasn't gonna, it was when um, the virus thing first started and people were starting to not spend money. And so all, every makeup company started sending out online coupons. And I was like, well, this is just the all-nighter spray. KVD does have a locket spray. I haven't ever tried that either, but. Okay. But I figured I wanted the blushes anyway, so I might as well get them 30% off. But I am going to be, since I'm not working, not going to be purchasing. I'm going to try not to purchase any makeup at all and just kind of use what I've got. I'm not going to get stuff on Poshmark, not going to buy stuff new. Just the only exception I think would be is if I ran out of something that I absolutely like an eyebrow pencil and I didn't have any other one that I could use. But we'll see how much I stick to that. But that's my plan. We're going to try and save money while I'm not working. So yeah, I just went in with a little bit of the Mac paint pot. Like I said, I did have a lid lock. My friend Lauren gave it to me. I didn't really use it. I'm pretty sure one or two declutters ago, I must have gotten rid of it because it's not in my drawer anymore. I was going to use it today, but it's very dry. Um, she'd had it for a while, so it could have just been that it was getting close to being expired but she gave it to me to try and finish it up or get a little more use out of it before it went now I pulled out the Saint and Sinner palette I apologize I'm a little all over the place just because I think I might use some of this absolution shimmer shade and then maybe a little bit of rosemary because um Lolita again isn't all matte palette. Let me try I got everything out of the way. Let's move the brushes over here. I need to wash my brushes tonight. That's going to be an hour long endeavor. I washed my sponges. Okay, I'm probably going to use a lot of the same brushes that I used yesterday. So I'm going to get my small tapered brush. I've got my Sigma E25. I'll pull out my concealer brush. Um, let me get some sort of a chubby. This is a Jessup 226 smudger for the lower. Use this for under my brow bone. This is a Lux smoke shader from Jessup. We'll see if I need anything else. I might be good with that. Okay, so here's the Lolita palette. I showed this in makeup I purchased recently video. Um, if you didn't watch that, the DHL driver hates me. He left it in um, where we drive. Our driveway is like gravel. So the box, the package was literally run over. I got this, that very first blush that I swatched and like a mauve lipstick from Kat Von D. Thankfully, the mirror was the only thing broken. As you can see, the shadows were all intact, but um, there was like glass shards that were falling down. And I didn't want to get into the eyeshadow, obviously. And you can depot these, but it, like you can see, it's completely shattered. And I didn't want to wreck, I didn't want to wreck the packaging and I didn't want to risk getting more glass in so I just put tape. So there's just tape over this. So I don't use the mirrors in palettes terribly often anyway. So that doesn't really bother me. Like I said, it's a miracle because I literally ran the box over. Okay. Haven't used this at all. I opened it and looked at it. 
and then I blew glass, <clears throat> excuse me, out of it, but I haven't used it. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go straight in with Lolita. I'm not going to use a transition shade. This Lolita may be the transition shade. Oh, that's, there's a lot of kick up if you've never used that. Probably dipped in too much. I have used the Saint and Sinner palette maybe three times, so I'm not super like on top of her formula. I was interested in the second Lolita palette just because it had shimmers in it, but that's when, you know, she was still with the company and they were having more quality control issues with newer products. And I didn't want to risk spending like $48 on a palette that wasn't going to perform well. I don't think this one had bad reviews. I think people were a little bit disappointed with some of the colors, but I don't remember hearing that the formula itself was bad per se. So, and this is one that I looked at when it first came out just because it's a mauve color story, but I already had the Naked Cherry and that has shimmers in it. And I couldn't really justify paying full price for this because it is an all matte palette. So I never got it. So when it was on sale for like 20, it's like, oh, I'll get that. So yeah, I got one of the blushes to try one of her studded lipsticks and I'm still saying her like she owns the company. She, I know I'm I know I'm probably annoying people. She, I know she is no longer with the company for the third time, but just in case. But I got a blush, a lipstick in this and then yeah, like I said the um DHL delivers our Sephora. Um, Mike finally called because like the track delivery service has started leaving packages in the yard too. So but yeah, I had almost run over two packages before that. So I knew it was just a matter of time. And yeah, it, I literally like ripped the box open with my bare hands because I was like, oh no. But the blush packaging is completely intact. The lipsticks completely intact. You saw the eyeshadows. The only thing was that the mirror was completely shattered, but that does not bother me. Because like I said, I very, even when I travel, I have a travel mirror. I just don't like holding something when I'm doing my eyeshadow. It just, <clears throat> I'm not used to doing that. I see people on YouTube do it all the time. They'll use a little like blush compact or some, you know, an eyeshadow palette and use the mirror while they're filming and that just... It bothers me to hold something the whole time. So I just, so even if I use a mirror in an eyeshadow palette when I'm traveling, I will prop it on something. So this doesn't bother me. It just bothered me that obviously it was going to get shards of mirror in my eye is <laughs> potentially. So that was my solution. Then I'm going to go in. I think it's Hermosura. This, no, maybe a, a Citos. I'm going to go in with the Citos. I was going to go in with this shade. I think I'm going to do this one first. My Spanish accent's not good, so be kind. I just wanted something to kind of soften the edges of that just a little bit. I like that. Okay. I'm going to take Lolita. On my lid. This is going to be, I'm not going to do anything crazy. This is going to be my standard normal. Oh, I got a little bit of conamorical, this, that shade that's in front of Lolita. Let's put a little bit of this in the crease just to deepen that up a little bit. I'm not going to really try and pronounce these a whole lot because, like I said, I'm going to butcher it. And then people are going to make fun of me, so we'll just, we'll just not. 
Yeah, I like this palette. It, these are blending out. They're pigmented. They're blending out really well. I'm going to go back into the Citos. If that's... I'm sure somebody did in the comments is going to be like, this is how you pronounce it. Or I, I can't roll my tongue, so my Spanish comes out really badly. Um, I might put a little bit of Corazon, which is this... Not necessarily the, the this, I think it's a black, but I don't know that I necessarily want a black out there today. I want a little bit of depth, but not necessarily like full on, like I do sometimes just a little bit gonna be a little more of a natural look every day not quite so dramatic although it may go more dramatic once I put the glitter on I feel like that didn't blend as well on that side Lisa I do have some staining so I'm not gonna necessarily fault the shadow at this point because I, I think these are fine. Like I said, they're blending out really good. They're pigmented. I don't, like I said, I think people were kind of underwhelmed with the shades. I don't know. I remember when this palette came out and there was like mixed, like people weren't as excited because everybody was super excited for a Lolita palette. And I know when this came out, people were just like, oh, that's what we got kind of a situation and I didn't end up using any other brushes on my eyelid. I did that whole look with just that one. I'm going to go in with this one under the brow. I'm going to take the lightest shade. I'm not even going to try and say it. And then I'll go in with um, maybe some sort of a shimmer under my brow bone. I'll leave that there. Because I don't know. Well, I guess I could do the lower lash line first. So let me go. And then we'll do all the shimmers at once. I'm going to go back in with Lolita. Let me look at the Saint and Sinner palette and see if there's a shimmer I can use for inner corner. Um, if not, I will pull out a highlighter. Let's see. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this, the one that we used on, maybe I'll take a little bit of this one, just a little bit darker of one. It's a little bit darker than what I used to kind of blend out the top. I'm not trying to do anything crazy here with this. Mainly wanted to try it. I like it. So that's nice. Oh. My allergies are still bad. But it's windy still. So let's see here. Um, let me try to go into Absolution for under the brow bone and let me see what that looks like. I think that's fine on top of that other shade. Oh, I said I haven't used this palette enough so I don't know. That is Heaven, so I think going to do that. And that was the other brush. I've missed a flat something. So we're going to use this. This is a dress up cream shader. So I'm going to go into heaven and that's going to go on the inner corner. Hoping there was going to be some sort of a shimmer in here that I could use. And I'm going to take it 
drag it down going into the shades on the bottom and then I may pull it up a little bit I still have to go in with concealer so let's do the concealer and then we'll see Got. I've only used the Satan Sinner palette two, maybe three times, so I'm not real familiar with how her formula works. And like this is the Satan Sinner is the only other um, Kat Von D palette I own, so I don't have much of a basis for comparison as far as the Saint and Sinner versus our other formulas. I don't think people hated the formula of this. I think people just didn't like that the color story is all over the place. So that kind of confused people, I think was their main complaint. I don't remember people saying that the Saint and Sinner was bad. It per se, like the formula was bad. They just, People are having a hard time making looks from it. So I just did my normal concealer on my lid and I'm gonna use that same brush. And I'm actually gonna go into Heaven, which is that same shade that I did on the inner corner. And we're gonna do that first. And then I think I will put Absolution on top of it. Cause I think Absolution and Rapture are supposed to be transformative shades the two at the very top of the palette so let's do this and this these apply really nicely with a brush I don't feel like I need to go in with my finger and the concealer is still wet so that helps too but All right, and then I'm gonna take Absolution, which is that kind of shimmery white, and we're gonna put this on top, and I'm gonna see if, I mean, I can kind of see a difference. I mean, I don't know if anybody on camera is gonna be able to tell. It's pretty, like I said, I don't know that it, like if I didn't do it on the other side, I don't know that anybody would notice. I don't think anybody would say, hey, your eyes are different, but it's pretty. It adds some more sparkle, so. Because I do remember people saying that those were sheer, and I want to say I've used rapture which is this pinky one i'm gonna use rosary down here so i used heaven i went into absolution heaven absolution and then i'm gonna use rosary as my kind of go between and i'm gonna go in with my finger and this is gonna kind of just be my gonna give me a little bit more shimmer and this being a darker pink I thought I was hoping it would tie in with the Lolita so that kind of helps I take a little bit on this brush flip the brush over and just to give me a little bit of a blend same thing on the side clean side into light into dark just to give me a little more shimmer and to help me blend that silvery-ish, white-ish shimmer into the Lolita shade. Okay, well, I'm glad that I can use this, at least in conjunction with that, to pull some shimmers because that makes me happy. Not that I don't have a drawer full of glitter, but it just makes 
And for the sake of the video, then I was able to use another Kat Von D palette. So we are going to try the Dagger Tattoo Liner. This came in a boxy charm, so this is an alternative to the regular tattoo liner. I threw my regular one away. I think it's probably in the trash down here. Just because it's about dried up, I do have another like deluxe sample. I'm just not opening it yet. So the regular tattoo liner has a brush. Oh, I guess there's still some left. I'll put this back in my drawer. I'll leave it out in case I have trouble. But the dagger liner has a little bit of a slant. Just as black is supposed to be the same formula. So give me just a minute and then we're going to do liner and lashes, mascara and all that. And give you fun. Okay, so I left out my regular one. There is still a little bit of this in that, so I, I'll keep it out. But let's see. Let me, I don't think there's a ton of fallout, so that's nice. Also, I figured with the mats, there wouldn't be was probably just going to be with the shimmer. So let's see. I do really like the tattoo liner. I've always liked the tattoo liner. That was one of those things, even when the controversy with her broke out, I was still buying it because it's a good, it's just a good liner. It's a very, if you are, if you are somebody that struggles with liquid liner, if you are somebody that like wants to do winged liner and you have a hard time, get that liner. Like I, it's a $20 liner. It's expensive. I hate every time I have to buy a full one. That's why I keep anytime I get a deluxe. That's why I don't have a full size because mine ran out and I had a deluxe sample. And so I was like, oh, I'm, I was going to get one as soon as that ran out and then I got this in the boxy charm and I was like, well, hopefully this will be good. And then I got another deluxe sample when I made my last order. So I just keep using it until it runs out. And eventually, yes, I will have to buy another one because it's good. It's still one of my favorite liners. I, it is waterproof. I didn't want to say it was and then be a liar. It is waterproof. I didn't have a terrible time with that. It is a little bit different. Um, it's gonna take me a little bit to get used to the slant, but it's not bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I'm gonna curl my lashes and put falsies on and okay. then we'll do lips. So I just ended up just curling them and putting mascara on. I was being lazy and decided not to put fake ones on today, but I don't hate the shape of the liner. I was worried I was going to hate it because I'm used to the fine point of the original. I would say if you struggle with winged liner and you've never used her liner, start off with the original one, but I don't hate the shape of that. So I'm glad I have a full size because it's the same formula as far as I can tell. I was able to use it. So the last thing is lips, and this is OG Lolita. This is one of their studded. I like the formula of this. I do own some of the liquid lipsticks. They're a little bit drying. They're not the most drying, but they're a little bit drying. But I've been gravitating towards bullet lipsticks because I'm kind of over the drying matte ones. So. I like the formula of these a lot. I now own four. I have like three. Two really wearable. This one and the one that I got in the box that got run over. Kind of a fuchsia color and then I can't up there, but I have plan nine. Um, my friend Lauren gave me this one. It's very like, like Slytherin-esque looking. 
It's a pretty green color, but this made me realize that I liked the formula. And then I have Love, which is a little bit more of a fuchsia. This is not going to be a wearable shade for everybody, but I do like these kind of fuchsia -y colors in the summer. And then Lovecraft is the one that I ordered that got run over. And again, completely intact. I've wore it bullet completely intact. This is probably the one that I will wear the most just because it's a more mauve. And then now I have, and I'll just swatch OG Lolita. I never owned Lolita as a liquid. It was one of her most popular shades, but those are the four. But I do like the formula. It's a satin formula. It doesn't dry down. It's not like completely matte, but it's long wearing. It's comfortable. Yada, yada, yada. So yeah, that is everything. I didn't have any issues with anything. I like all this stuff. I'm going to continue to use it. I'm hoping people aren't going to be as harpy on the brand now that she's not part of the company anymore. So let me know what your thoughts are on the brand. Because I would like to do some looks with the Saint and Senator palette. I'm keeping it. I want to get my money's worth out of it. So if people are not bothered, let me know. And I will start doing looks with this just because I need to use this palette more. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this look. Let me know what you thought of the products. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye, everybody.